Hi guys, today's Friday. I finished work for the day. I've been working out of the boat today because hopefully at some point during the day a guy's gonna swing by and take a look at my engine. Before we get into that, I want to take care of one quick piece of maintenance and I want to show you two things that have happened here aboard the boat since I uploaded the last video. I'm sure most of you guys recognize this thing. This of course is my reflex diesel stove, which I absolutely love. Seeing as winter is just around the corner, I figured I'd better take a closer look at it and also take care of some very simple maintenance. I've already removed the cooktop. The coil and the rings you see down there can also be removed. Everything looks perfectly fine, but there is a little bit of buildup of what I assume is soot over in this corner right here. I removed most of these soot. Let's see if one of these can't take care of the rest of it. I've shown you guys these before. I used them about a year ago to remove soot from the stove and they were awesome at that. I'm sure there are other products out there that does the same job, but then I know these are awesome at least. And these have the added bonus of uh, burning with a really cool sort of greenish color flame. The stove has had a chance to heat up now, so let's go ahead and switch on the diesel. Look at the color of that flame, that looks amazing. Now the stove basically cleans itself, which is awesome. Let's head outside and take a look at one of the things that has happened since I uploaded the last video. Ta-da! I've mounted the small clamshell vent cover. I think that looks pretty good. And there's that nice big 25mm hole in there. It'll take a lot to clog up that hole. Of course it only took a couple of minutes to put up that vent cover, so that's not really all that impressive. But uh, I want to show you something else. Winter hasn't set in yet, but it is a lot nicer here inside the boat than it is outside. And of course, that's all thanks to the reflex stove. But what I want to show you is down here. You guys should be familiar with this view, and this of course is my bilge. If you look closely, I hope you'll be able to see that it's a nice bright white down there. And that's because I've painted the bilge. I was able to do that because I took care of the cracks. I ended up talking to five separate shipwrights, and they all agreed that the cracks I had in this big blob of thickened resin weren't a big issue, not in my case at least. So I think I showed you in the previous video that I put a nice bevel on the cracks. I filled that up with thickened epoxy after it had dried, and uh, then I painted the entire bilge with four coats of two-part epoxy primer. That means I can move ahead with my original plan of converting this part of the bilge to a uh, rainwater reservoir that I can then pump overboard using this bilge pump. I can't remember if I've mentioned this before, but the reason I want to separate my bilge into two parts is because I have a lot of water coming in through the mast on the inside of the mast, that is. And I can't really think of a way where I can seal up the mast and avoid that water without introducing a whole heap of other issues. So for now I'm stuck with having a lot of fresh water in my bilge. So if I separate my bilge into two parts I'll have the fresh water side and then the salt water side. And luckily I don't see a lot of salt water in my bilge. But uh, the portion of the bilge where I do see a few drops of salt water also sees some oil and other grimy stuff. So I figure if I put the uh, bilge pump in the fresh water portion of the bilge it'll last for years and years and years and I'll have an easier time keeping an eye on the salt water side of the bilge. Now water will still be able to flow in between the two sides of the bilge but we'll get back to that a little later in this video. You guys might recognize this. I've sanded the surface and I've drilled a hole here for the water to enter through. This of course will be my second attempt at getting this little bugger to stick to the underside of the cabin sole. This time I'll use thickened epoxy. And I've also come up with a slightly better way of keeping this in place while the epoxy cures. And I do think this is gonna work out great. This certainly feels very sturdy. I've attached a piece of hose to my doohickey. I've run a line through it and to the one end of the line I've tied this bolt. Now the head of this bolt is too large to pass through this fitting. So if I insert this and pull on the line, and I have a nice way of securing this in place. 
And once the epoxy is cured, I can remove the bolt by pulling on the other end of this line. And there we go. I'll of course need to connect that bilge pump to a through hole and uh, I'll do that using this hose and my entire plan sort of hinges on whether or not I can shove this hose underneath the engine to the aft end of the boat. So let's give that a try. This is the cable from the log I removed down on the keel so I think I might be able to use this to pull this hose through. Son of a diddly. Woohoo! Now that I've managed to run that hose, the next step is to drill a nice big hole in my boat for that through hole. Yeah, that was the uh, engine guy. He's on his way. My cordless drill has run out of battery, and uh, I know I have a spare battery somewhere in there, I think. I managed to find the charger, but not the spare battery. So I think what I'll do is I'll plop this in the charger, that way I can drill the hole for the through hole tomorrow. And that gives me time to do something a little bit interactive. Because I'd love to hear where you guys would mount that through hole. I have two suggestions. Option number one is going to be right around here. Now I like option one because this isn't going to be visible when you're looking at the boat. And uh, well, who really wants to look at something like this? Option number two is going to be right around this area. The good thing about option number two is that this is placed further above the waterline, but this isn't really meant to be used in case of an emergency. Go ahead and leave your vote down in the comments for either option number one or option number two. Personally, I'm very much in favor of option number one. But uh, I think I'm running out of daylight here, so uh, I better hurry up and give you the explanation as to why someone is swinging by to have a look at my engine. Yesterday, a guy swung by the boat to help uh, replace this cutlass bearing, but uh, unfortunately we failed. Now it seems the only option I have to remove this cutlass bearing is to remove the shaft. But because of the skeg, the shaft needs to be removed that way. And of course, for me to be able to do that, the engine needs to be removed. I was planning on removing the engine this winter anyways because of the leak in the gearbox. It's gotten so bad lately that it seems the engine can't really run for more than 10 minutes or so and the gearbox is just completely dry. So I need to take a closer look at that and I'd hope that I'd be able to just replace the cutlass bearing now, leave the shaft in place and then remove the engine this winter with the boat still in the water. That was the plan, but I don't think it's gonna work out that way, sadly. So yeah, we'll see what happens once the engine guy shows up. Okay, the engine guy has just driven away and uh, he took a look at it and uh, he thinks he'll be able to help me a week from now. So that's next Friday. We'll pull the engine, he'll take the engine with him to his workshop and have a look at the gearbox. and. Uh, he said I could uh, tag along if I wanted to, so uh, that'll be really exciting. But uh, yeah, I need to head up and uh, go shopping for some food for my luxurious little tiny fridge. So uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video guys. See you! Yurkul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. To be notified about new content, please click subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I suggest you check out the introduction playlist. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment.